Hello, we're back with our reading of Deleuze and Gatarian. I will now speak of the what they call the plane of eminence, right? So they articulate philosophy in uh, not only the creation of concepts, which is one moment of philosophy, but they articulate it with what they call the plane of immanence, right? So usually immanence is opposed with transcendence and philosophy, and it has to do with a certain way of designating materiality as a living materiality, as a dynamic becoming uh, fleshy um, materiality, um, a sort of um, infrareality that um, they say is a sort of a section, a slice of chaos, right? So we've seen that for them, the chaos is this idea of uh, dynamic multiplicity, I would say creative multiplicity, of course. And, and so it is a creative real, it is a, a creel. And they write, to give consistency without losing anything of the infinite is the project of philosophy. So here we start to understand how a philosophical concept is different from a technological concept, for example. We could argue that a bicycle is a technological concept, right? But the difference is that the bicycle doesn't try to um, consecrate in itself the freedom of multiplicity while in a certain way, uh, formalizing it. That's philosophy. The bicycle is just um, performing a given function, right? As a shape, of course, it expresses uh, all the possibilities that was not that were not expressed in its actualization. But nevertheless, the if the if bicycle is a concept, technological concept, uh, it performs a function, while a philosophical concept for Deleuze and Gattari tries to be the best machine, the best point of junction between chaos and reality, creality and the real by not only being a unifying principle, filtering in some way the chaos, but at the same time by preserving the uh, creative multiplicities of the um, imminent chaos, right? So, and that's why it's difficult. That's why it's difficult because in other words, philosophy wants to formalize, to abstract the diversity of life while keeping it, while keeping living diversity within its formalization. It's a strange dream, indeed, quite different from the dream of science, which in a way um, is not preoccupied with multiplicity or only in the sense that it provides material for different technological concepts, different operations, while philosophy in a way wants to find this sort of universal key, the philosopher's stone, that would allow 
all, opera all possible operations, all possible transformations from imminence to reality, from the creel to the real and back. So they write the plane of imminence as two facets, as thought and as nature, as nous and as physis, which are Greek terms, nous. Nous expresses the uh, spirit, physis expresses nature in its blossoming, in its becoming, in its ever uh, renewed production of um, phenomena. So, what philosophy tries to do is actually unite these two facets, thought and nature. Or at least produce an intellectual realm that will not be a negation of the natural realm. Okay, so it is essential not to confuse the uh, concept, the concepts that occupy the plane of imminence and the uh, imminence. Plane is a common Deleuzean, um, Gatarian term. Uh, sometimes in French they use the, the, the word plateau. Right? So this is sort of a ground. A, a dynamic ground uh, that fertilizes um, manifestations, realizations. Okay. Right. So, how does that articulate um, with? what was previously said, the evocation of the idea of event, right? The idea of the concept as the contour and the configuration, the constellation of an event to come. Well, I think it becomes clearer now because if philosophy is this dream of producing a mold that would be um, multiversal uh, as opposed as for example the mold of the concept of bicycle technological concept of bicycle well in this case we have the idea that the event would be the manifestation the mundane manifestation of how multiplicity has been both given shape to and preserved by a concept. In this case, a philosophical concept. So behind that, we read this platonic dream of the philosopher king, of course, of philosophy being simply present in the everyday. And this is a very old philosophical dream, which for some is quite contradictory, right? How can philosopher want at the same time to retreat in the, in the realm of concepts and at the same time they would like their concepts to operate in the everyday reality, in every detail of everyday reality. Well, this is called integrity. Um, this is the moral concept of integrity. When your way of making coffee reflects your way of thinking, for example. Uh, 
Okay. So in this sense, thought is natural, right? We understand that. Thought is natural, which doesn't mean that thought is not artificial, but the artificial is natural too. Now, the artificial of technology is very different from the artificial of philosophy as we have understood with the previous example of the bicycle, but we of course could use the idea of artificial intelligence. Nevertheless, we could say that in the dream of artificial general intelligence, um, there is this uh, sort of a mirror of this philosophical dream of finding um, a sort of universal key um, The question is, well, how does intuition play in that uh, quest? And they speak of intuition uh, in the sense that concepts are deduced from the plane, but they require a special construction distinct from that of the plane. And they are not deducted in the sense uh, of uh, mathematical deduction because there is also what they call a throwing of dice there is also an element of philosophical audacity what does that mean? well, we'll continue tomorrow see you